Today on The Hookup, I'm going to show you an Arduino compatible MP3 player board that you can use to add sound effects to your projects. But more importantly, I'm going to show you how to decipher other people's code to use in your own projects. As part of my Halloween decorations, I had some pretty simple goals. I wanted the randomly generated lightning effect on my house LEDs to also play a thunder sound effect. And I wanted a crazy witch to cackle every time someone rang the doorbell. To do this, I bought this little Arduino compatible serial MP3 player from Amazon. For eight bucks, you get an MP3 decoder that can read a micro SD card, adjust the volume, and play specific tracks. But you get basically zero documentation on how to use it. Normally when you get one of these boards, it has an accompanying Arduino library to import to work with. But this one doesn't. In fact, the only documentation that you can find for it is in the questions section of the Amazon listing, where it gives this link to some example code that you can use to make it work. Now, at this point in my electronics journey, I feel pretty confident reading through someone else's code to figure out what in the world is going on. But I remember a time not so long ago that someone else's code may as well have been written in hieroglyphics. This video aims to help you decipher the important parts of other people's code so you can make it work for your own project. I'm gonna use the code for this MP3 player board because I think it's more useful if I use code that I didn't write as an example. This code will also be ideal because it doesn't use any additional libraries, so all of the functions are included in the main sketch. If you'd like to follow along, I've included a link for this code in the video description below. Before we even begin, we need to be able to separate code from not code. Most sketches will include sections that are called comments that are made by using a double front slash or a front slash and then an asterisk. These sections do not contain code and they're just there to help you understand what each part of the sketch does and they never actually even get uploaded to the microcontroller. The Arduino IDE turns them gray so it's a bit easier to distinguish them from the coding regions. Alright, on to the actual code. I remember when I first started reading and writing code that my biggest problem was figuring out what commands a microcontroller could understand and what it couldn't. The quick answer is that there are very few commands that an Arduino board can natively understand. These commands are called the built-in functions and they're part of the Arduino IDE. There's a list of them on the Arduino website that you can find here. But why are there so many other commands used in other people's code that aren't listed in the built-in functions? For instance, you can see that in the code for this MP3 player, it says send command, command play, zero, which seems like a nice human readable command. But the microcontroller will have no idea what that code means unless we tell it what it means. Since this code doesn't use any special libraries, we should be able to figure out how the microcontroller knows what these extra commands do. The first part says send command. And if we look through the code, we can see that there's a part that says void send command. This part of the code is called a function, and it's basically a series of actions that perform a specific task. This function sends commands to the MP3 player that it can understand over a serial connection. You can see that it expects two inputs. The first one is a command, and the second one is data of some kind. Now our function makes a little bit more sense. Send command, command play zero, We'll use this function to send the command, command play, to the MP3 player, and it doesn't need any additional data for that, so the data is equal to zero. But wait, command play isn't a built-in function either. So what does that mean? Another place where we teach the Arduino code new words is usually located at the top of the code. This area has a whole bunch of entries that say define. And each define entry essentially works like the find and replace function in Microsoft Word. Once you press the compile button, it will replace every instance of the value command play with the value 0x0d, which is a hexadecimal number that the MP3 player will understand as a command. Using define statements allows us to make our code more human readable, and it also allows us to change every instance of a command quickly, since editing this one line will change what each value is replaced with. The final way we teach our Arduino new words is with variables. The difference between a define and a variable is a bit obvious, but also a little bit more complex. At the most basic level, a define gets defined as a single value and never changes. Whereas a variable is, well, it's variable. 
meaning you can assign it different values at different points in the code. The more complex difference is that when you hit the compile button, defined values get replaced before they actually get to the microcontroller. But variables are actually assigned a location in memory on the chip. Armed with this knowledge, we can now try to figure out what this code actually does. Generally speaking, there are two places to look. The void setup section contains parts of the code that need to run one time in order to make the hardware work. This is where you normally connect to Wi-Fi, initialize sensors and pins, and set up your MQTT or HTTP connections. Generally speaking, the stuff that's in the void setup of someone else's code will probably need to be copied into the void setup of your code in order to make those particular peripherals work. The second and more important place to look to figure out what a program actually does is the void loop. The void loop runs hundreds or even thousands of times a second. You can see in this void loop, it checks to see if there's any information that's been sent via the serial connection, and then it sends that information to the MP3 player using the send MP3 command function. So to figure out what that function does, we'll need to scroll through the code and find void send MP3 command. And immediately, you can see that in this function, if I type in a question mark, or a letter H, it'll output a list of commands for me. At this point, I know enough about the program to start testing it out. I'll hook up my little MP3 player board to my ESP8266 based node MCU using the pins that are listed in the defined section of the sketch. The pins were initially listed as pins 5 and 6, but I chose to modify them based on the chart that I made for my earlier video about selecting the correct pins on the node MCU and I decided that pin 4 and 5 would make better choices because they won't interfere with the boot process at all. I also need to grab a micro SD card and format the names of my MP3 files using the naming convention specified in the example code, which is folders with two digit numbers and these names for the MP3 files. Next, I'll plug in my Node MCU into the computer with a USB cable and select the correct COM port for that USB port on my computer. These are the standard settings that I use to upload programs to a Node MCU. Once that's all done, just hit upload and the file will automatically save, compile, and then upload to the Node MCU. After it's uploaded, I should be able to go into the serial monitor and press H to get a list of commands for my MP3 player. Pressing 1 should play the first sound effect, two should play the second one, and three should play the third one. Perfect. But this doesn't really do me any good yet. I'm not going to be triggering these audio files manually via the serial monitor. I want them to be triggered by MQTT events. At this point, I want to take an old sketch that I've already written that has Wi-Fi and MQTT, and I want to combine it with this MP3 player sketch to enable my MP3 player to work via MQTT. As I mentioned before, I know I'll need to combine the void setup of my sketch with the void setup of the MP3 sketch. I'll also need to make sure I include the functions, variables, and definitions for any commands that I want to use. Specifically, I'm going to be using the command command play with volume, which allows me to specify both the file and the volume to play it at, which will allow me to vary the volume randomly to create a more realistic thunder effect. To keep my code more readable, I'll group together the functions from the MP3 player and put a comment on that section so that I know what those functions do. Since I borrowed this MQTT code from another one of my projects, I also need to change the client ID and the check-in topic so I don't create conflicts on my MQTT server. Finally, I'll add in some MQTT responses to play each track via MQTT and then hit compile and see if I get any errors. If I do get an error, it's not the end of the world. Sometimes I forget to add a semicolon or a curly bracket, but usually I just forgot to copy over some needed function or variable. In this case, I purposely left out the s byte to hex function to show what happens when you forget something. No problem. Go to the original code, copy it over, and then try compiling again. If you can't find that function that's missing in the original code, it's very likely that you're missing a library. Check the include statements at the top of the code to make sure you aren't missing any from the original file. My program successfully compiled this time, so I can send it over to my Node MCU using the same settings as before. Now when I send the message 1 to the topic audio, it plays the Thunder 1 file, 2 sends Thunder 2, and 3 sends the Witch Cackle. I plan on adding more of these later to play at different volumes, but this will do for now. 
A simple node red automation triggers the cackle when my MQTT doorbell rings, and a small edit to my lightning LED code sends either a one or a two to trigger one of the thunder sound effects. Mission accomplished. Now I just need to find some bigger speakers to use for trick or treat night. Thanks to all my patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. If you look forward to these videos each week and you're interested in supporting my channel, check out the links in the video description below. If you aren't subscribed yet and you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.